is the morning of the third day of my hike of the John Muir Trail. And uh, I've got about two miles to go over Donahue Pass. It's my first kind of major pass of the trail, and it's the one that takes me outside the border of Yosemite National Park to, I believe, Ansel Adams Wilderness. Uh, the fun part is I get to go see if the day starts with a rock hop or a ford because uh, I camped near a water crossing and as of last night it was definitely a ford. I was hoping the um, the snow melt would snow down, <laughs> slow down enough this morning so that it could be rock hop but uh, that is the first thing I'm going to check out. Okay here it is and it is definitely a little lower and I just saw somebody do it successfully but I don't know. Um, I'm worried about this section right here, which looks a little slick, and if you don't hit it right, you could potentially be going down that, that cascade there. So I might be going to the ford, but might be doing the ford up here, where it's a little shallower. This is ice cold water, <laughs> it's, it's snow melt and this is early morning, so I think I'm going to try the ford. Okay, here it comes. Oh man. Can't believe I'm opting for the Ford. Alright, looks a little deep there. I'm gonna come over here. Yeah, that's cold. You can successfully rock hop this. <laughs> I saw three sets, well, three people, three separate people do it successfully, but I tried it a little bit. I actually didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, so I'm not feeling that confident in my rock hopping right now. So I'm just opting to Ford. It's cold but it's not as cold as I thought it was going to be and I'm across so <sighs> onward I just wake up to my morning and then apparently there's sections like this where you can't rock up anyway so I guess it was not a big deal I got my feet wet this morning there's another ford to start my morning this is actually the top of that snowmelt waterfall I was pointing out last night. <laughs> it's windy this morning. You see nice clear water melting from the snow. Um, my feet are already wet so I'm not even going to attempt to rock off, but I'm going to turn off the, the camera while I cross. Here it is at the top of Donahue Pass looking north down Lyle Canyon where I came from. Uh, this is kind of a longer pass. It's one of those things where you can't see uh, the north side and the south side from the peak of the pass. So this is just the rest of Donahue Pass. Coming up. Look at this. There's a little lake up here. I did not see this last time as I think I said it previously. I hiked this in a big snow here and this was all snow and ice but Cute little lake that leads down into Lyle Canyon. Officially now entering Ansel Adams Wilderness via this broken sign. Still not across this pass yet. It's not super long, but it's a little long. Uh, once I get a view of the other side, I'll break the phone out again. Now we're talking. This is the, it's still windy. This is the south side of the pass, looking south over the High Sierra. Really getting into it now. Uh, the next thing is uh, another pass. So there's another pass in a couple miles. So that's what I'm headed to. See what kind of views I get in the meantime. That's pretty gorgeous. This looks like all that remains of the snow from this year. This pass got more snow than pretty much any of the other passes, so I think this is just about it. So it's a good thing I didn't bring my ice axe or micro spikes. I really don't need them. They would have spent extra weight. <laughs> a little better view of a marmot than uh, yesterday. This guy's out sunning himself. Sorry about the wind on the rocks. Kind of a cool sight though, seeing the marmot and the, the big high Sierra peaks behind him. And he's just he's just chilling there. That marmot. 
I love these areas just below the passes that are still high enough in elevation but uh, are covered in snow most of the year because they're just beautiful especially when the snow's not here got this beautiful clear water uh, these wildflowers all around me really these nice clear water water features and there's the pass way back up there it's just such a beautiful place wow i hope this comes out on video but look at all these little wildflowers blooming they're just totally dotting the landscape the color you can see these red ones might as well do a 360 because this is just an incredibly beautiful area a um, little bit further down from the pass now clear water grasses wildflowers um, remnants of snow it's just so pretty At least that crossing had um, stones, the other one had a broken log. Still heading up towards Island Pass. Okay, this is the very long top of Island Pass. It's one of those that just kind of goes on forever. Um, the steep dramatic passes will be further south along this trail. So I just came up very, very gradually from that direction. This is a very I would say easy pass. It's not even that high, 10,200 feet. And next up should be the junction for where the Pacific Crest Trail and John Deere Trail split. I had a nice break in the tree, so I wanted to point this out. This is Thousand Island Lake, uh, and you can see why it's called Thousand Island Lake. Uh, not quite a thousand, but there's a lot of islands down there. Big, beautiful lake. And um, at the very bottom there is my next trail junction that I'm headed to. At the bottom of Thousand Island Lake, it's super gorgeous. And I'm gonna turn around slowly because the sign is right behind me. Um, but this is the split. So this trail in front of me is the PCT. This trail to the right is the JMT. So you can see there's a sign here. JMT just kind of goes straight. PCT has to do the curve. Now, this trail kind of goes to the west a little bit through some meadows that have a lot of bugs. The John Muir Trail is going to go through a series of lakes, which also have a lot of bugs. <laughs> so they, do, they run parallel, just uh, one runs west of, of one and the JMT runs east of the PCT. So um, I think I looked on my map and after about 14 miles of JMT only, they come together again by Red's Meadow. And, oh, Devil's Post Pile. Devil's Post Pile is where they come together. One more glance at Thousand Island Lake. So pretty. Passing by the first lake named after gemstones. This beautiful, beautiful lake is Emerald Lake. Really pretty. I'm sure these are all going to be equally as gorgeous. Passing by through the trees, Ruby Lake. That's a smaller lake. You can still see there's some snow melting into there. And this beautiful expanse that I'm coming down to is Garnet Lake. I'm actually going to find the trail first. It's over here. I'm um, going to find some place to stop here and eat lunch. This is, this is really pretty. I couldn't resist getting into it. It's way too pretty. However, it's really windy and it's really cold, so just kind of seated, <laughs> seated in for a little bit. Look at this view. 
I just uh, came out of the basin that had Garnet Lake, and I'm actually headed toward his other basin with three more lakes. And this is the view on the way there. Pretty nice. Still on my way to Shadow Lake, which is the next lake, um, but <laughs> this is pretty cool so far. I mean, this is like a, a, a waterfall uh, down to a waterside, and it keeps going. You can see it keeps going in front of me too, but down in that basin, kind of where I'm looking, is the lake, so uh, kind of following the water source down to the lake. And I have to say, now that I have done both these routes, the JMT and the PCT, in this section, the JMT split is far superior. It's really scenic and beautiful. So this is just about the best view I've gotten to Shadow Lake, Ooh, definitely, uh, besides the one I saw from above that I did not film. So it's getting late in the day. I've got two more lakes, I think, on this tour, and they are up. Um, I think I'm just, see the end of this lake here? I think I'm climbing up that. Uh, so uh, we'll see what time it is by the time, uh, by the time I get up there. Hopefully those lakes will be visible. Uh, pills have been, uh, have been challenging. Through the trees and the wind, it's back. It's Rosalie Lake. That was an impressive climb to get up here. I'm very hungry. And Rosalie still got some light on it. One more. And lastly, with those evening reflections, also through the trees, is Gladys. She's the last one. So now I am interested in finding a place to camp. This has felt like a pretty big day. Pretty long, big day. Okay, I managed to find a campsite. Uh, the original one I was looking for um, was was occupied. Uh, problem with, with so many lakes around this area is just, just so many mosquitoes. But anyway, that's the end of day three. Feels like the end of day four. <laughs> Gosh, feels like the end of day four. It was a lot of a uh, lot of lot of stuff packed into one day. Uh, but tomorrow I will be making a detour to Devil's Post Pile. Finally see that, and then um, going to be spending a couple hours at Red's Meadow. And beyond that, I have not um, not really planned that out. So <laughs> I'm going to jump in my tent and uh, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>